Hi, welcome to the Living Clean Podcast, the show to help you feel good again. I'm your host, Bonnie Wilderson Hayes. I am a speaker, certified holistic nutritionist, and founder of Living Clean's Healthy Lifestyle Transformation and Nutrition Programs. Each week, we will destroy myths and share the truth about the food you're buying and consuming and provide insight into the best food programs to avoid slowing you down. My purpose is to help you enjoy food again and finally achieve the results that you want. I believe that everyone deserves to enjoy mouth-watering, good-for-you food that doesn't send you running for relief. Now, let's get started. Hey guys, it's Bonnie. I want to talk to you today about Leaky Gut. It's the latest post on the Living Clean website. And because I was not able to explain as much as I wanted to on that post, I kind of wanted to give you an explanation from a scientific perspective, something that is happening biologically that causes leaky gut itself. Okay. If you go into the blog post, you'll see an image at the very bottom comes from diet versus disease. They've done an absolutely wonderful job of illustrating what happens and what causes leaky gut. Okay. So now let's go back to what it actually is. Leaky gut is considered an intestinal permeability. What that means is your intestines have been damaged, okay? It means that for some reason, your nutrition and the things that you are consuming are now able to leak into your bloodstream rather than being absorbed as is biologically necessary to distribute molecules and vitamins and things without the toxic component. Okay. And I I know we toss toxic around a lot. Toxic just means harmful. It doesn't mean deadly. It just means harmful. All right. So let's get that straight real quick. So we don't freak out because this is a, this is a pretty serious topic. There are a lot of people in this world that are suffering from leaky gut conditions and they just aren't aware of some of the symptoms. They aren't aware of what has happened or what causes it nor do they know how to fix it and how to heal their gut, okay? That's part of the reason I started this podcast and started Living Clean is a lot of the things that I've dealt with, there wasn't a solution for. And really what it boiled down to was for me, the solution was based in my nutrition. So leaky gut is very similar. It is caused from things that we consume, all right? So here's some of the symptoms that you can feel and you can experience when you have a leaky gut condition, all right? You can have some nutritional deficits. So you're eating as healthy as absolutely possible, being very strict, eating clean. But when you do blood tests, you're finding that your body is not absorbing these nutrients. Even though they're being put into your body from bioavailable, high-quality sources, you're still deficient. You can have chronic issues with either your digestion or pain within your body, fatigue that you feel that you have no explanation for. It's not like you spent all night partying and you're tired. You spent all night sleeping, should have been quality sleep, but you woke up, you're still tired, you feel like you haven't been sleeping. And it's a chronic condition that doesn't seem to go away or it's sporadic, but it has no explanation. Headaches, memory loss, joint pain, Things that people suffer from chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, your libido's gone, you're depressed, your mood is all over the place. All of these things can be symptoms associated with leaky gut. Okay. With our body, the way that our brains work is if we are suffering from something and it detects that it is not getting the vital nutrients it needs to run optimally, then what it does is it shuts down those systems that it sees as not necessary for survival. They're not vital for survival. We do not have to be in a good mood to survive. We do not have to have sex to survive. So that means reproductive system is gone. Our mood is in the toilet because there's nothing helping us to feel better. Okay. But what causes all of this? If we're talking leaky gut, what's actually causing all of this? Well, leaky gut stems from issues in the intestine, like we talked about initially, right? So let's talk about the digestion process. 
Now, this is kind of the part where we're going to get a little bit scientific. So put on your thinking caps because we just entered biology class. We're going to do a little anatomy and physiology today. All right. So your digestive tract, the way that it works is we consume food. It goes into the stomach. It gets broken down and it's sent into the small intestine, right? Our small intestine is responsible for about 90% of all digestion that happens within our body. Our small intestine is responsible for creating bioavailable molecules, for getting our food into molecules that are the size and the shape that we need for it to permeate intestinal walls, get into the bloodstream, and actually be bioavailable usable sources. Things that will fuel and help nourish our body, help us move, help us function, right? Because of this, Our small intestine is where all vitamins and minerals are sent into our body, all right? So now, small intestines have three components. They have the duodendum, which is responsible for the very first phase of digestion. They have the jejunum, and then they have the ileum, all right? Each one of these parts has a role. So when you look at a an image of the small intestine, it just looks like this long little track. It doesn't look like there's a lot of anything going on, but there are three separate components and three separate functions within the small intestine. So the duodendum, that first phase, what happens is molecules come in from the stomach and now they have to be broken down even further so that they're at least the shape that your body needs it to be so that it can actually permeate walls and be absorbed by the blood system, right? The duodendum is where this occurs. So pancreatic enzymes and bile from your gallbladder all combine to break down these molecules even further, right? From there, it goes from the jejunum. Now, the jejunum's main role is to absorb the nourishing elements. So the vitamins, the minerals, and the nutrients that our bodies can use to fuel itself and fuel vital functions to operate efficiently, to create that homeostasis in our body, um, to boost our immune system, you know, keep us from feeling tired, all that good stuff. Basically, it fuels every vital system in our bodies. When the jejunum is encountering molecules that our body does not recognize or things that are harmful, they still have been broken down in the same process as normal plain old food molecules, all right? So we are talking processed foods, refined foods, um, sugars, caffeine, if you're, you know, eating in excess of caffeine or any other herbal substances, this is seen as a foreign component because your body can only absorb so much of that, all right? Caffeine, it's literally anything over 200 milligrams. So what that means is that Two cups of coffee is pretty much a limit for any of us. Otherwise, in excess, you have a susceptibility of causing health issues. You're susceptible. That doesn't mean you're actually going to deal with anything. Some of us have this iron stomach that we don't have to deal with any of this. But genetics being what they are and today's society and food source being what it is, leaky gut and concerns with harming our intestines This is a condition that we need to address, all right? Things that come into our food source, we need to be aware of what we're eating because if it comes through, it gets broken down and the jejunum gets it and it doesn't recognize it, it's going to send it through to the bloodstream. From there, it gets sent into fat stores because what is your body going to do with it, right? Well, when we look at the jejunum and we're looking at leaky gut and how that actually occurs and how the molecules that are absorbed in the inner wall and just slowly make their way to the outer wall, how does that create leaky gut? We're going to look at starfish and jellyfish. And I know right now you kind of were like, what the heck is she talking about? So starfish that are out of water, they are hard. They If they go through anything, they're going to scratch it, right? You put them up against wood and you try and draw on wood, it's going to scratch the wood. Jellyfish are not hard when they come out of water. They just sort of dissolve. 
try and scratch wood with a jellyfish, it's, you know, it's not going to scratch it. So our vital nutrients, the things that our body actually recognizes are going to be your jellyfish. It slides through. The spaces are perfect for these molecules. It glides right into the bloodstream, fuels our body. Everybody's happy. Go lucky. Nothing has happened to our bloodstream. There's no damage to our intestine. Then you have the molecules that our body doesn't recognize, the harmful substances, the viruses, the bacteria. These are the starfish. Imagine trying to send a starfish through the same holes that a jellyfish just glided through. You send a starfish through there, it's going to scrape it up. It's going to damage it. It's going to ding it. And that's essentially what's happening within our intestinal walls. When that happens, those little tears, if we consume too much of these, it creates excessive tears. If we do it over a significant period of time, those tears do not have a chance to heal themselves. Our body is phenomenal at healing itself when it is given the opportunity. When it's not, and we just keep feeding it crap and feeding it crap or feeding it things that it doesn't recognize and views as something harmful, it's going to cause issues, okay? That's what creates leaky gut, is sending these molecules through. Some people say foreign substances. Some people say bacteria, whatever the case is, there are things that should not be consumed by our bodies. There are things that are deemed as harmful to our bodies. If you have an allergy, for instance, and your body is not able to do anything with those molecules, sometimes your body sees it as a foreign substance, doesn't recognize it. And that's where issues with having it absorbed in your body in the jujenum come into play. Now, what happens after the jujenum is once those nutrients and those minerals are absorbed and sent into the bloodstream, what's left goes into the ileum. That's where your bile acids and your B12 are extracted. So you can create urine, you can send B12 through to the vital functions that it's needed for to create energy and boost ADP, things like that. From there, it goes to the large intestine. Your large intestine is where hydration takes place. So when your food is doing this absorption within the small intestine in the jujenum, it still has a significant amount of water. The moisture is still there. If there are holes in your small intestine in the jujenum because of cracks or cuts that have happened over time that have not been given a chance to heal, the bile acids, the B12, the water, and all the waste that should be going out your colon are now susceptible to entering that bloodstream, your bloodstream. And this is where leaky gut conditions occur, okay? This is where they happen, is because your body has not been given a chance to heal itself, so now the damage has been exacerbated, and now you're just continuing to damage that intestine even further, and your body is starting to shut things down. It is not able to absorb the nutrients it needs from the food that you're giving it, even if you're giving it a really high quality source, it's going to have issues absorbing it because of all the other crap that's now getting into your bloodstream. It causes pain. It causes celiac reactions. It is, whew, it can be pretty, pretty painful. It can be pretty frustrating. You start to crave carbs, energy, and sugars. And really the biggest reason is because you're not getting the things that you need. Conditions like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and some of the other autoimmune disorders, those occur because of situations like leaky gut that have been unaddressed, right? Now, there are things that come out of this. So the autoimmune disorders obviously come out of this. Genetic conditions, things that have been passed down, things like lupus and Crohn's can be genetically passed down, as can rheumatoid arthritis. So what that indicates is that for whatever reason, your genetic line has a very fragile small intestine. Be careful with your small intestine. Now, what do you do if you end up with leaky gut or you have these symptoms and you don't know what it is? Medical professionals, pharmaceutical, your standard contemporary medical 
professional, a lot of times doesn't recognize leaky gut or intestinal permeability as an actual medical condition. However, they can identify different issues in your intestine. They can identify harm to your intestine. Regardless of what they call it, as long as they can identify it and they can help you, a lot of the way that you can restore and heal your gut is by using nutrition to help you, all right? So what you want to do is you actually want to eat healing foods, okay? You want to eat things that are gut-soothing, that are anti-inflammatory, all right? So you want to stick with coconut oils, coconut in general. um, Avoid things like grains and dairy. Um, Keep away from really anything that is gluten-related. And keep away from your soy, keep away from nuts, beans specifically. So beans kind of have a component within them. They have a chemical that if you do not combine beans with some sort of a wheat flour, it can cause gassiness. Well, that can actually cause cramping and pain in your gut. So avoid all the anti-inflammatories, avoid beans, and eat some gut-soothing foods, all right? Things that are gut-soothing are things like green and green leafy veggies, cruciferous veggies, so your broccoli, your cauliflower, asparagus. Um, you want some sauerkraut and kombucha and maybe some coconut yogurt if you're not allergic to coconut. Anything that's really fermented to help keep and maintain the healthy bacteria, the pre and the probiotics within your system. Those will really help soothe your system. Some people actually recommend bone broth. So what you'll find on the Living Clean blog post is a recipe that you can make in a crock pot. You can make it on your stovetop, either one, that has some bone broth. I have it listed where you're using vegetable broth, but you can put bone broth in there as if you want. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting enough fats in your diet as well as enough amino acids. So if you are a vegan or a vegetarian in a case like leaky gut where you're trying to heal it, the amount of foods that you will be able to eat will be limited. So you want to make sure that no matter what, you are getting enough complete amino acids. So vegetarians and vegans, you have to pair up foods. So just be conscious of that if you're trying to heal. As you go through and you're trying to heal all of these symptoms and heal your gut, You can also be working on getting some blood tests going either through a holistic professional or through a medical professional, your standard, you know, specialist or regular doctor to help you identify and diagnose leaky gut and intestinal permeability. Sugars should be avoided at all costs, whether you're dealing with leaky gut or not. Added sugar that doesn't come from fruit, right? When you're dealing with leaky gut, you want to eliminate a lot of the fruits because That fiber, while it's good for cleaning you out, the acids and the sugars are going to exacerbate conditions until your stomach has rebalanced, until it has healed itself. So essentially what's happened with leaky gut, to kind of put a summary on all of this, is you have consumed something that has caused cuts and tiny little tears and damage into the intestinal wall in the jejunum specifically that are allowing things to escape into your gut that are not supposed to be there. And it is causing a significant number of issues or could be causing a few things. Regardless, it's making your life miserable and they got to go. So that is your science lesson for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this little explanation. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Read the blog. It'll give you kind of a summary overview of leaky gut. And this will be your detailed explanation of what actually happens. And like I said, if you have questions, reach out. I will talk with you guys soon. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for listening. Did you love this episode? If so, 
Share this with a friend or someone you think would find it helpful. Leave a review on iTunes, Anchor, Stitcher, or Google Play, and let me know your honest thoughts, questions, and takeaways. Not a fan? I'd still love to hear your feedback. Disagree with anything you've heard? I would love to hear your experience on social media. If you feel like you're still struggling with your health goals, send me a message or check out livingclean.com for details about our nutrition and well-being programs for busy lifestyles. Stop struggling and start enjoying food again. See you next time. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app, free for iOS and Android.